Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So while I kind of get set up here, let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. I am going to be going through and showing you guys kind of the process of me attempting to animate in Procreate. Now I have dabbled in kind of using the animation feature in Procreate before when I first got my iPad and first started to use Procreate, but I've never really made anything that was like more or less kind of complete. Um, and I don't mean complete in the sense like of a whole entire scene or anything or a whole entire storyboard or anything like that. I just wanted something that had line work, color, and looks like more of a finished piece, if anything. So I'm starting off to do by doing some planning right now. So I had two ideas that I would like to attempt, but I am only going to be doing one of them today because um, animating... Okay, it's, it's just, for me, it's like overwhelming. I don't know if it's because like I don't have an animation background. I never learned how to do animation or like properly, uh, you know, studied animation or anything like that. So my knowledge of it is very bare bones if anything i've always done things frame by frame um if i wanted to do anything that's kind of akin to just like animation in general i've done like a few crude versions of like 17 moments and kind of like a chibi form done with like just mostly lip flap movements and occasional like moving of arms or like changing of the facial expression but i had never really done like too much movement now granted today we aren't going to be doing a lot of movement either because i am not confident in my ability to capture movement well in animation in a 2d form especially so maybe in the future if i would uh, like to maybe I'll try to practice a little bit more, but I feel like I wouldn't want to make like a finished piece I think doing more gestures and all that stuff would probably be more beneficial for me But for now, um, you can see that I was doing kind of like little chibi bodies and just like trying to map out How I wanted to potentially draw a maseki if I wanted to do this animation Which I wanted to do maseki doing kind of like a walk cycle for a little bit and then him suddenly tripping and breaking a pot kind of thing because I wanted him to be carrying the pot and I thought it'd be, be like it could be fun to do the movement of that sequence but for like for some reason I don't know if I have to look up references or just think about it a little bit more and do a lot more planning I can't think of how to make a person look like they're naturally walking um, therefore, I won't be able to probably make it look like he's gonna trip either. I can probably make him look like he's gonna fall, so... I don't know, I feel like this one was gonna be a little bit of me sketching, like taking too long to sketch. So I think we are gonna go with my second idea, um, but I did do a lot more planning for this one, as you can see, because... For the most part, um, I'm gonna leave a few links in the description. So basically, what even just kind of spurred this idea of wanting to do more animation or just like playing around with the animation feature in Procreate was I saw I think it's WBA animation or something like that or studio I'll make sure to put the links in the description of the videos I saw but they do like a process of showing how they do kind of like short scenes of their animations and they're really cool as I, I really do like how they kind of splice it up and they do it in like a way that is a little bit more digestible in terms of understanding on how they do their animations granted I don't think I have the the willpower their perseverance or partially like you know a lot of the skill set that you might need to do animation at that level especially um so it will be very intimidating, but I just like watching their process because I, I do like how they did the background and the character separate, um, the way they storyboard and then the way they did the panning and everything for like the background with the character. It's very cool. I, I, I really like seeing behind the scenes stuff for a lot of people's like... I was gonna say skills, but I don't think it's skills like jobs or work or anything like that. I love seeing the behind the scenes the most because maybe it's because like I love seeing process a lot so yeah I kind of went on like that kind of like a rabbit hole and I remember the fact that I did try animation a little bit in procreate so I wanted to do it in procreate just because 
I've been trying to not sit too long at my computer for too much. I've been getting like a migraine every so often and I feel like it's because I've been staring at my computer for too long. Um, but luckily, I think this weekend I'm just going to be spending most of my time I think doing some traditional work as well as packing orders for the most part. Also, thank you guys very, very much for uh, having a lot of interest in my store. I really do appreciate it. I also wanted to apologize that I didn't stock very many notebooks this time. I wasn't sure about the response on how many people would be interested in notebooks, but it, I think it was a lot more than I thought. So hopefully I'll be able to do more of a print, sticker, and notebook focused run for the next store update so that I can get them out to you guys a little bit quicker. But for the most part, I think in the next few days, um, you guys should be getting notifications on shipping. So yeah, um, let me think. So to kind of backtrack, because we're kind of speeding along and the majority of the rest of the video will be in time lapse because I spent it says like I think five and a half hours but obviously that's only the drawing time so I feel like I spent a little bit too long with the amount of footage I had so I'm gonna try my best to just put it all in time lapse so you guys can see the full process anyways um, and I highly recommend, like I said, to check out those videos because I think it's more interesting to watch a professional do it rather than my amateur self doing this on Procreate and just kind of like, kind of playing around and seeing what happens. So I did do a brief kind of lineup of how I wanted to draw Maseki. I am drawing Maseki today. Um, like I said earlier, I wanted to do a chibi of Maseki, but for now, I think we're gonna do kind of like a head turn thing. I think I've done this kind of similar sequence in Clip Studio Paint at some point. I think it was the last time I did like a Clip Studio Paint kind of like review, and I did test out the animation feature on there. Now I've tried animating on Clip Studio Paint before too, but I think that for me is a little bit more intimidating. I know a lot of people are, are probably more, I don't know, uh, what is it called? Familiar with using like the, I forget what they're called, keyframes and stuff, or like animating on twos rather than on threes and stuff. Like people who have more of that background might be able to use uh, Clip Studio Paints, uh, their stuff a little bit more easily. Now, I found the Procreate one was just a little bit easier for me to use. Like I said, I've animated stuff very crudely, very simple by using a editing program and paint tool sigh. So basically I would do all my frames and paint tool sigh and I would do just like small snippets. And before I would do background and character all in one uh, frame for each scene, which sucks or like each, uh, each frame, each movement, whatever it's called. And that was very painful. So I think that was because I used to use paint tool sigh in window movie maker and when windows movie maker, you can only have one timeline or like one track. So it's hard for me to edit everything together. But now that I moved to a different uh, program, it was easier for me to kind of mess around with having layers by having the tracks as different, like the background, foreground, character, anything like that. But for Procreate, I didn't really want to do a background that much. I'll show you guys an example of what I was playing around with earlier because I did do a tiny little animation of Albin just so that I could get used to playing around with grouping of the layers and stuff because I had an inkling on whether or not groups acted as one frame, which was correct. It's kind of similar to like if you're using the page feature in Procreate, if you make a new layer, usually it makes a new page, but if you group your pages together and put them into a group, they act as kind of like, um, the group acts as the one, what is it called, page. But in this case, the group acts as one frame. So this gives me the capability to be able to do line work, sketching and coloring, all three of those in one group or folder in this case, and then making that one frame so we can kind of organize everything. Now, for my canvas size, I should have probably talked about this a little bit earlier. I set it to be, I think it's like just a normal video format size. So I think it's 1920 by 1080. And I think it's 300 DPI, which probably isn't necessary. But I think I was able to have, 
I don't really know what the maximum layers I think. Maybe it was like 127 or something like that. So it was plenty of layers for me to work with because I needed about five layers per group. Now, I can't count how many frames that I have on the bottom, but I think it was plenty enough for me to work with. So, um, process wise, like I said, I actually did two sketches. Actually, I didn't say this. I don't even know why I said that. So earlier you guys would have saw that I did two phases of sketching. So I did one with blocking out kind of the figure a little bit and I did it with very basic shapes, just trying to make sure that his head can do like a turn, kind of get those aligned. And then after that, I made a new layer to do the actual sketching for Maseki so I knew where to line. Now the line work and coloring is gonna go super fast because this was probably the the bulkier part of the footage and the longest part for me to work on because it was a lot of back and forth and a lot of fixing. Um, even though like I probably started to spend the most time probably sketching because I did a lot of adjusting for the line work just like on the fly because I was trying to make things work or trying stuff like new stuff which you know sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but for the most part, I kept things pretty simple. I didn't change Masaki too much. And I know I, as a, kind of like as a crutch, I usually duplicate my line art layers a lot and reuse them for certain frames. And I feel like that makes a lot of my movement very weird because it's like, Sometimes I would redo maybe the lines for the clothing, but then I would keep the face and the hair the same. And then you'll just see like the the body looks like it's kind of like jittery or moving a little bit, but the face is very like still. It doesn't move and it's very stoic and it looks very off. So I tried my best that if I was trying to reuse certain frames, I would try to change his hair a little bit here and there just to show a little bit of movement. Um, but for the most part, because Masaki's face doesn't stay in the same position the entire time, it's not that noticeable that there are some frames that share the same line work for the most part. I also added in the little leaf on his head. So initially, I don't know exactly what I was going for in terms of the whole sequence, is that I kind of wanted to be like, Maybe you're calling out to him while he was like sorting something on the ground or he's like, ex like, um, what is it called? Organizing or cleaning something up and he's crouching. So like he's out of the frame. So then when you call out to him, he kind of like gets up and looks towards you, but then he gets embarrassed. Um, that or it's just that he was finishing something up and then he gets up. Then you call out to him and then he notices you and gets embarrassed. And I think another thing I would have like to do is maybe like he had kind of more messier hair because he was working and stuff and maybe you point it out and that's why he's embarrassed but I think I went with the second option and then I left the leaf kind of on his hair just so we could add a little bit of more movement when he gets surprised for the kind of the leaf to bounce up out of frame and then come back in frame a little bit but like I said I didn't want to make it too complicated because I Animation's hard. <laughs> it's very hard. I think like similar to comic making, both of them require so much amount of time and the amount of detail is kind of like up to the person, but the whole sequence of it, I feel like is very time consuming, very meticulous, depending on the person as well. But I think for the most part, it's very meticulous because like for comics, you have to think about like frames or not frames, what is it called? Like placement for each of your panels, as well as like text and composition, anything like that. But then for animation, you also have to think about composition, uh, like background, storyboard, framing. Um, I think like because both of them have very much like film aspects of how you want to frame the character or shots of like scenes and stuff, it's very important for having your composition down. So yeah, I feel like in the future, I would like to dabble in both of those a little bit more maybe not for videos just for like practice sake i don't know i feel like i always like i like trying new things in terms of doing stuff for art just because like it's kind of like the spur of the moment that video i saw earlier with like of the animation studio doing their animation on procreate it was just like wow that's it's very interesting and i really wanted to try it out 
So I did do the album, I think, a couple of hours before I did the one of Maseki. And I think I had a little bit of a better grasp grasp because like the one I did of album was a little bit janky. Um, but yeah, I think I learned a little bit about how I wanted to do things. So after we did the sketch, I went ahead and did the line art for all the frames. After that, I then started to do the coloring. So for the background, I didn't know if there was a different way to do this. So in the video that I saw, they did the background and the character separate, but it's because theirs was a little bit more intricate and I think they had like a specific way of how they wanted to frame um, each composition or each frame. But for me, I didn't know if there was an easier way. So I just copied the background of like of this kind of like gradation and on, into every group and then after that I will put the coloring of Masaki on top of it and then eventually I will merge them um, so that we can just have a flat image per frames just to make it a little bit easier for me to organize. Okay for coloring though I did kind of do like base colors first and then for every base color that I did I actually added them to a color palette just for easier access for me and I don't have to do a lot of flipping back and forth to make sure that colors are accurate and correct. Um, but then I kept the shadows and the highlights super simple. So I did the... basically I put a multiply layer on top of the entirety of Maseki to kind of tone everything to be a certain atmosphere of a color. It's very warm and I set that to multiply. Then I set a new layer and set that to addition or add and I wanted just a little bit of rim lighting because I really didn't want to deal with the shading because I don't think I understand on how they choose to do the consistency of their um their lighting and stuff. I, it's just hard for me to grasp at this moment. So if I wanted to kind of finish this up to a certain point and just get the general gist, I don't think it was necessary for me to focus on trying to get every shadow correct, every highlight correct, and trying to make it make sense. Because obviously it doesn't really make sense, but I feel like it makes the whole animation just a little bit more complete by having Masaki fit into the background a little bit with the lighting. It just looks a little bit more finished rather than just having the flats with Masaki on top of the gradation of the background. Uh, just because Masaki doesn't really look like he fits in the environment at all. Um, I'm trying to think what else was there. Uh, yeah, I think for the most part, I did change the line art color to be brown just to make it a little bit warmer. Now, I wanted to change the color of the like his nose, his mouth, like the inside of his fingers and stuff to be a lighter brown. But because I merged the first layer um, right at the beginning, there was kind of no going back. So yeah, it was just hard for me to adjust that. But right now I'm just like testing out to see um, how did I like everything. And at some point I believe I did duplicate my canvas. So I have two of these files now and I'm adding a noise filter onto each of the frames because I wanted to see whether or not I wanted kind of a more old timey feeling kind of to fit the the atmosphere and the color palette of everything. So I was trying to add a noise kind of filter to every frame and I wanted to see how that looks. But I think in the end, now that I look at it, like look at the entirety of the animation on my computer. I think I like it without the noise filter. So I did export that as well. And at the very end, you guys gonna you guys are gonna see the one without the noise filter. Can you guys tell I'm like brain dead right now? I'm like slurring all my words. I feel like the lack of sleep lately has been making me, I don't know, just not wanting to stay on my computer or even on the iPad for this matter. But yeah, five hours and three minutes for the most part for just the drawing and those layers are not accurate. So we'll check on the second version. I just duplicated it before merging. Um, yeah, and then this one will actually have the proper layers. So I used 51 layers for the all the frames for here. Me here's Maseki. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it's really scattered, but I hope you guys enjoy regardless. And I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Bye!